Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media, and today I wanted to show you something really cool that I discovered over this weekend. I saw this on Matt Zoe's Twitter. I think he retweeted it, and um, a lot of other people chimed in to Olan. And I wanted to show it to you today because I think it's pretty game changing as far as workflow goes. Just wanted to use my platform a bit to shed some light on this really cool small developer that's creating an awesome product. If you enjoy this video, consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive perks, including project file downloads, tools for your creative process, early access to videos, and more. Click on the card in the upper right-hand corner for more information. So traditionally, as you know, if you're a producer who's been doing this for any time at all in Ableton, a plugin looks like this. You have this generic XY pad that's not mapped to anything. You have the save button and the recall button for presets. And then you can expand here to you know see everything about a plugin. All of the parameters of the plugin here are represented here. Um, and of course, this wrench actually opens the plugin itself, whether it's a VST, VST3, or audio unit on Mac. But traditionally, if you're not you know going to use these every single dial in the plugin mapped to uh, a visual macro here um, layout you really can't adjust the parameters of your plugins um, without actually expanding this plugin window here. So every time you want to make a small adjustment, whether it's like, you know, a, a slight change to your synth or your reverb or whatever, you have to expand. And this is uh, obviously a real pain. It adds like, you know, a few seconds of energy every time. Like I'm working, I want to change. Click that, go to the window wherever it is on the screen and then adjust the parameter. But if you actually uh, look under the hood here and you, you see, I mean, every one of these dials is actually correspondent to a virtual fader here within the Valhalla Room plugin. And what this really clever developer has done, and I can't believe it hasn't been done before, they've used a Max for Live plugin that they've developed to essentially apply a UI to all of these parameters that mimics the plugin. So I have a few of them loaded up here. I have the Valhalla stuff specifically. As you can see, this is a shortcut. Basically, it allows you to make adjustments to this VST plugin from within the audio effects window here instead of having to expand every time. And of course, you can still do that. And when you make adjustments here, it's reflected there. But you don't have to. You can do all of your adjustments within this window here instead of having to expand it every time, similar to a traditional Ableton native plugin. Again, it's a really, really simple thing. It's just applying a UI overlay to a max patch is basically rerouting all of these parameters to the corresponding parameters here. But it's just such an elegant and simple solution. So the developer, if you go to the website, is Elisa Hom. I believe their name is actually Nandor. Nandor. I'm, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. But you can check it out at the link in the description below. Again, this is not a sponsored video or anything. I think it's just such a valuable tool that more people should know about. Valhalla Wrapper is the Valhalla DSP wrapper. So they've done this for two manufacturers so far. They're taking suggestions over on Twitter. They've done Valhalla DSP and Sound Toys up to this point. I know a lot of you love the Sound Toys plugins as well. So if you want to check this out for yourself and maybe suggest one of your favorite plugins for this treatment, go over to their Twitter or to their website and you can reach out there. Each one of these packs of all of the plugins for Valhalla Room and Sound Toys only cost 10 bucks. It's, I think, a very, very good deal for the amount of time it'll save you in your workflow. And bear in mind, this does require Max for Live, so you will need Ableton Live Suite. That's, that's the one caveat of this. But if you do have Max for Live and you do have Ableton Live Suite, this is an invaluable tool that can really accelerate your workflow. So that's that. I don't really have much else to share about this. I just wanted to use my YouTube platform to share what is, I think, a really valuable tool, something that a lot of people will be able to utilize and accelerate their workflow on. I want them to continue developing these and make versions of this for a lot of different plugins. And I'm sure that if they keep going, they'll probably get support from the plugin manufacturers themselves because this is super valuable for a lot of people. So if you guys want to check that out, again, it'll be in the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for future videos like this if you're interested in cool stuff that I find interesting. 
Make sure to subscribe to the channel for future videos and stuff like this that I just kind of stumble on and want to share with you guys. And make sure to give the video a like if you found it helpful. Let me know in the comment section if you're going to be using this and if there's any plugin in particular that you think should be treated with the same treatment. I'm Julian of Julian Gray Media and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.